science in the parking lot. Welcome back, JTSD scientists. We've got another awesome episode of Science in the Parking Lot today. And I gotta tell you, I'm excited we're filming this twice a week because now it's my only reason for showering and putting on clothes. The kids and I have been doing lots of science and we were wondering if there was someone who could help us figure out like how to make our own crystals. I can, I can. We can use a saturated solution to create crystal eggs, which is perfect for this time of the year. If you're going to do this experiment at home, you can use some of the supplies around your house. You'll need some construction paper, a tray or a plate. You will be pouring a saturated solution into it, so make sure it can hold your liquid. Some scissors, a spoon, a container that can go in the microwave, and some water. You'll need some salt, and some optional tools would be if you wanted some twine or string, a hole punch, and maybe little cookie cutters or an egg shape, something you can use to trace your design onto your paper. To get started, we need to create the eggs. So the first step in our instructions, you will get some of your construction paper. And this is where if you have something you can trace, you can lay it down and trace the outline of the shape. At our house, we did not have anything to trace. So it's okay to just freehand cut instead. So you can just cut out your egg. And then I didn't have a hole punch at my house. So a little trick I like to do is you just fold the top and make a little snip with your scissors. And then I can slide them in and cut out a little hole. Now the reason this part is optional, if you don't want to hang up your crystallized eggs, you don't have to. But if you want to, when you're done, if they turn out, you can actually stream them onto some string and twine and you can hang this up somewhere in your house. Once you've cut out your eggs, you're gonna come and get your tray and you are gonna lay your eggs or whatever shape you decide to do out on your tray the important part is that you want them to lay flat. And this is why you need um, a plate or a tray versus a bowl. All right, now the next part, I'm gonna need a little help from my friend, Mrs. Hanchi. Mrs. Hanchi, do you think you could help us with the salt water mixture? I'd love to help. Got my salt, got some water. We wanna make a super saturated solution. That means we wanna get as much salt as we possibly can saturated, dissolved into this water. And I know from science at JTSD in the past that when water is cold, the particles squeeze up together like when they freeze and they form ice. And I wanna get a lot of salt in there. So I'm gonna use water that's hot because I want the particles in the water to push away from each other so there's space for lots of that salt to dissolve. So I'm going to stick it in the microwave for a couple of minutes. So you might want to have your parents help you out with this part. There we go. All right, we got those water particles pushed away. So we got some extra space in there. So I've got my hot water and I've got just some regular old table salt. So I'm going to put it in a spoonful at a time and stir, 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 until it's all mixed up. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but there's some steam rising up, it's so hot. So I stir until it's not gritty anymore, and then I'm gonna add some more. In two cups of water, it might take about six tablespoons of salt until you can get this solution super saturated. So when I look down there, I can see that, oh, I'm not seeing any more. So that was two, let's try another one. Can I get some more to dissolve? Yep, 
I'm going to keep going until I can't get any more salt to dissolve. And there will be some that starts to settle at the bottom just a little bit because our solution will be super saturated with salt. Oh, I'm seeing some salt in the bottom, and even though I'm stirring and stirring, this water can't hold any more salt, so I know it's ready to put on my eggs so that I can start making my crystals. All right, here we go. I'm going to put it on there really carefully because I don't want that water to start washing my eggs around. Oh, see that green one started to wiggle a little bit. I'm just going to put a thin layer I had construction paper, but as I was looking, I also had a couple of pieces of bright printer paper, and I wondered what would happen if I used paper that was different than construction paper. So I'm gonna keep pouring this in there until there's a thin layer that covers all of my eggs. Now comes the hardest part of all, waiting. Hey, Mrs. Robinette. While I'm waiting the next day or two or maybe even three days for these eggs to crystallize, you got any other cool things we could do with crystals? Hmm. Well, I got to thinking, Miss Hanchi, we actually did have some borax laying around the house. So, Renly, do you think if we make some borax with hot water, that would maybe form some crystals? Yes. Yeah, let's give it a try. So for this experiment, you will need some pipe cleaners if you have some laying around the house. Um, if you wanted them to be colored and they are white, you can always add some food coloring to add color to your pipe cleaner if needed. Um, we have some popsicle sticks, but you could also use a pencil if you didn't have these. Um, a little bit of yarn, um, some scissors for cutting, and then tape for the end. So the first thing that we did was to decide which size jars that we wanted to use. So we wanted to see if the size of the jar would actually matter. So we went ahead and formed um, some borax mixture for the large jar, the medium sized, and the small jar. Now Renly's been reviewing her 2D shapes here lately, so she wanted to form a couple of 2D shapes with her pipe cleaners. So she just twisted them up, and Renly, you want to show me what you did there? Mm -hmm. So I did an oval, a circle, a flower, and a triangle. So you can form um, whichever kind of shape that you want, depending on the amount of pipe cleaners or the size jar that you're using. So we went ahead and poured the solution into the large jar, um, and you will need three tablespoons to one cup of hot water. So we knew that we were going to be using more than one cup of water, so we actually started with six cups of water total and put 18 tablespoons of the borax into our mixture. You wanna keep it stirred up to try to get the borax to dissolve uh, for the mixture. Now Renly, you go ahead and put your circle okay. into the borax. Once you've, cre you've created your designs with your pipe cleaners, you'll wanna use your popsicle sticks and your string to attach it on like this so it will dangle in the water. After you've done that, you'll place them in, and Renly did the large one for us. Now we're ready for the medium-sized jar. And go ahead, Renly, with the last one. Okay, we're a little short on water in this one, so I'm gonna take a little bit of the mixture from here so this will cover our triangle. You just want to make sure that the liquid actually covers your shape or your flower, whichever you choose to do, and that it covers all of the pipe cleaner for the crystals to grow. Now we chose to use a glass jar just so we could kind of watch the process happen. Um, once you're done, you don't want to move your jars around. You want to keep them in a place um, where you can just observe with your eyes and not move them. Here in a couple hours, the crystals should start to form and then check them again at night 
and then the following day after about 24 hours you'll be able to pull them back out of the liquid and see if the crystals have formed. Mr. Lynn, you said you didn't find any pipe cleaners around your house. Did you find something else we could use? Miss Robinette was able to use pipe cleaners for her experiment, but I didn't have any of those at my house. So I looked around and I found some twine and I was hoping it would work because of the rough texture. So I'll have to wait and see. I also made my saturated solution and added some purple food coloring. Now I had to do a little bit of math because this container holds four cups of water and I know the recipe calls for three tablespoons of borax for every cup of water. So if you use a bigger container, you'll have to do some math too. I went ahead and made a circular shape out of the twine and I made a little knot on the side so it would stick together. And then I tied it to a skewer to hold it when I suspend it above the solution. So now I'm gonna dip it in there. So now I am not going to touch this. I'm just gonna look at it through the side and I'm gonna check in on it tomorrow. So about 24 hours from now, I'll pull it out to see if I have any crystals forming. My solution has been sitting for a few hours now. And if you look closely, you can see how the crystals are starting to form inside my container. It's pretty cool. My solution has been resting for 24 hours now, and I'm going to gently lift out the string to see if any crystals formed. And it looks like I had some success. I'm gonna put it on paper towel so it can dry. But what do you notice about all of these crystals? Hey, Mr. Mon, what do you think about all of the crystals that we've made? Mrs. Tinlin, that was so awesome! Can we do that right now? Yeah, we got to get off of here and do that. But when we do, we're going to be sure to share it on Instagram with the hashtag Parking Lot Science. And we want to see yours too. That way you can end up with results that look like this. Our next video comes out on Monday and you're going to need a quart size Ziploc bag, a gallon size Ziploc bag, ice, salt, and milk.